More deep pocketed investors lining up to get in on the latest OpenAI funding round, which would value the company, ChatGPT, of course, the maker of uh, over $150 billion. Join us right now to talk more about it is uh, Uporv uh, Agral. He's the Altimeter Capital Partner. He leads investments in private uh, AI companies. You look at a $150 billion valuation, uh, you look at the losses on the other side. You look at the revenue potential and you say, this makes a lot of sense, this makes no sense. What do you, what do you think? Thanks for having me, Andrew. It's good to be here. Look, the past technology super cycles have produced large outcomes. The internet super cycle produced a two trillion monopoly in Google. The mobile super cycle produced a three trillion business in Apple. Do we believe that the AI super cycle will produce a business that is worth more than 100 or 150 billion? We think so. And so the second question is, is OpenAI the winner of that AI super cycle? And look, that's where there's a lot of debate, a lot of competition, a lot of burn, as you said, expensive valuations. And we might be in the minority of believers who think that OpenAI is the indisputable leader in the AI super cycle. I'd be happy to walk you through my thesis. I don't think you're in the minority there. I think ChatGPT is clearly, from a product perspective, uh, clearly ahead of, of the rest. The question that I would ask and, and maybe it's an unfair question, but long term, do we believe that these models become commoditized? And how much money is an open AI going to be able to capture relative uh, to a Google or an Amazon or a uh, Facebook, who's obviously with Llama, uh, Llama uh, is, is an open model and free? You know, what happens long term in that regard? Definitely. Look, I'll be the first to tell you, Andrew, I don't think it's the model layer at which the value accrues. It's the application layer above the models, the consumer applications like ChatGPT and the enterprise applications that will accrue the value. And so if you look at each of those two, right, on the consumer leaderboard, ChatGPT today is clearly the leader, right? They've got 200 million weekly active users. Um, they've got, three, you know, three, four billion of revenue run rate. And let me point out that two years ago, there was none of this. There was no chat GPT. Most people had not heard of OpenAI. And they've gotten here in less than two years. This is despite all the noise. You know, the, Sam Altman being let go, a lot of management turnover, competition, as you said. And so all this has happened amidst turmoil, which gives us a lot more faith in this leadership's team to execute. On the enterprise side, you know, as Jensen said in the earnings call last, last week, the first company to get to the next frontier of AI gets to introduce a revolutionary level of AI. They get to be the leader, not the second one who gets there. And OpenAI had, has consistently and systematically delivered both leadership in terms of performance, as you saw with the Strawberry Owen model last, last week, and price every couple of weeks. They have dropped the price of their models. And so look, you know, huge kudos to the team there, Sam Altman, Noam Brown, who've led the research here. And while there's a lot of competition, uh, we believe that OpenAI is delivering do you think that, uh, that OpenAI long-term is going to have to fundamentally change the company's structure? Obviously, there's a not-for-profit entity and then this for-profit uh, part that has this, this valuation, but that ultimately it's going to have to get wrapped together. And does that then create any kind of liability for the company as well in terms of some of the early folks who uh, either funded it, we can call them funders, or we can call them investors. I'm talking about Elon Musk and some others, uh, how that changes things. Look, I think they'll, they will get to a point where the company structure is aligned with investors. I don't, I can't speak to that uh, right this moment, um, but I think it's an important one. What I can say is there have been companies that have gotten to a structure such that they allow liquidity for early investors and early funders, as you said. You know, we've seen this model at SpaceX, Andrew. Uh, every year they have uh, some kind of a tender, and so, you know, we could expect some kind of that structure going forward with OpenAI if they decide to stay private longer. What is your sense about investing in some of these other companies, an Amazon, an Alphabet, um, a Meta, for example? Right. Look, I think competition for OpenAI is at those levels, right? One is the big tech, is the, the ones that you mentioned, and, and startups. I would say on the startup layer, if you combine the revenue of all these startups together, it's, a, it's less than a tenth of OpenAI's revenue. So I think OpenAI has emerged as the winner there. In big tech, I think they've got formidable competition, as you said, right? Meta, Mark Zuckerberg at the top of his game, formidable consumer brand. Google, Sundar, deploying their amazing resources. Uh, but we think the age of 10 blue links is over. People are looking for answers, not search. 
And Apple, you know, one of the most formidable uh, consumer brands. Uh, I'm not saying it's a total layup for OpenAI, but from our perspective, OpenAI has threaded that needle uh, perfectly uh, in partnering with, with the big tech that matters uh, and competing with, with others who are formidable. But does that mean Apple wins or Apple loses at $218 a share? You know, we are, we are, we are very uh, optimistic about Apple. You know, we are, there's a lot of great products coming down the road with Apple, uh, and we're excited to use them.